Welcome back to another episode of Shit I Wish I Knew. In this episode, we're going to be going over the Greek clarinet. We had a request come in from Laura from Virginia. Laura, thank you very much for reaching out. And thank you to everybody else that subscribed, liked, commented, shared. It means the world to me and it keeps the channel going. So first, we're going to introduce the instrument itself. Never had one lesson. We're not using the BAM system, which is the common system used in like jazz bands now. Uh, what we're using is an Albert system clarinet, and that's most common in Greek music. And it has less keys, a little bit different of a finger pattering, and it gives us a little bit more flexibility on bends and trills and, and certain stylistic elements that we use in our music. Mouthpiece, I like to use a jazz mouthpiece that's a little bit wider of an opening, and I'll put a link in the description as well. And then I've had questions before on what reeds we use. So I tend to use softer reeds, either a 1 or a 1.5. Uh, and I'll also put a link to, to the reeds that I like to use. Now, I'm not getting sponsored or anything by any of these companies that I'm going to tag. Just a resource, something that I get questions on all the time. So hopefully that helps. Uh, without diving into too much technical detail, I want to jump into the music itself. So one of the most common tunes that we have in Greek music is a Kalamatiano. The Kalamatiano that I'm going to show is just the introduction, a uh, little tidbit that, that gets the, uh, the party going. Uh, Kalamatiano is also referred to as Sirtos or Eftari because its time signature is 7, 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're going to be playing this song in C minor, and I'll show the scale on this clarinet, but you're not limited to C minor, and I'll get into that when we get into some of the embellishments and some of the more intricate passages. So let's do a close-up, and we'll go C minor scale. <laughs> on the lower register and if we continue up so using that scale we're going to jump right into the melody and everybody's heard it the songs like all of these use that same introduction. That's why this is such an important building block. So that's the bare bones skeleton melody of the Calamantiano that we're going over. I'm going to show a little bit more of the intricacy, a couple of the embellishments, and then I want to show one specific little passage that we all commonly use to end a phrase. So let's dive right into that. That little ending right there, we use it from top to bottom on the map of, uh, of Greek music. And it's really simple. So F, G, A, B flat, C. So this is how that one goes. And it really rounds off that phrase. And like I said, we use it everywhere. So let's dive into a little bit more intricacy. So a couple 
different things are happening there. Let's dive into tips and tricks. So commonly in Greek music, what we're doing is we're mimicking the floyera, and that's actually why we stuck to Albert's system, or at least that's what was told to me. And a lot of what happens on floyera doesn't happen with the mouth. What we're doing is we're doing these little pops on the fingers. But right in that first little passage, we got through the entire scale of what we're playing, that entire passage. Once again. That's such a stylistic thing. A lot of the older recordings, if you hear old recordings of Caracosta, that was very common. The next tip that I'm going to talk about is the staccato playing. A lot of our playing is ta 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 so you're going to do a combination of the pop fingering and sharp notes coming from, from the mouth, from the, from the tongue. Uh, I have heard of methods where players will do like a double, like a that, 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 that. I don't know how to explain it better on video, but it will keep it going. And what you want to do is make sure that each note is heard and each note is popping clearly. So again, Next trick, a lot of the embellishment that I like to do is flipping from register to register. So let's say I'll finish the phrase of adding that little end note to finish it off. Last tip that I like doing myself is some of the bend notes. So let me give you an example of what I mean by bends. It's that you're kind of hovering over the, uh, the melody. Essentially what we're doing is we're staying within the skeleton. I'm adding as much stuff as I possibly can that will keep me in time. And that's use, utilizing the chromatic scale. So you have all of these notes in between that C minor. So utilizing all of those, you can start embellishing, you can start maneuvering your way through the melody. Another thing that I said earlier on is that we're not limited to playing this in C minor, not by any means. The clarinet's a very versatile instrument. As different singers are going to be able to sing this in, in all sorts of different keys. So example, F minor. <laughs> So that's the episode. Laura, thank you very much for reaching out. I hope this video helps. And please, please, please make sure to reach out with any questions, any help that you need at all, always available. I want to thank everybody again for watching, subscribing, liking, sharing. 
If you haven't done so, please hit those buttons. It keeps the channel going. Feel free to reach out with any requests. Love making these things. Love helping people out. That's it. Until next time. Thank you very much for watching. Shit, I wish I knew.